Power 98.7 Podcast. Call JJ on 0861-987-000. Welcome. Welcome to Power Perspective. You are with me on Kobutse JJ Tavani. Today, we will be talking moral generation. We will we'll be going through into that frank dialogue shortly. And while we are still also on the open line, we'll take the last two uh, callers on the open line. Soli in Le- Leondale. Hello, Soli. Oops, Soli. We lost Soli there. Let's talk to Tapelo in Rustenburg. Uh, good evening, JJ. How are you? Been in fine. How are you, Tapelo? <clears throat> I'm good, thank you. Let me first wish you all the best on this show. Thank you very I much. I can assure you that weeknights will never be the same again. Ah, thank you so much, man. Thank you. I feel yeah, welcome. Yeah. Yes, um, JJ, you know what I'm thinking? Um, this issue of moral decay starts at home, if we can be frank about this. Um, yeah, it, 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 we say charity begins at home. Uh, we have issues where people have abandoned uh, practices of culture, practices of Christianity, and so forth. States uh, in the past, we have known states to be like where we have uh, Christians dominating. Mm. We have states to be Christian states. Mm. And uh, you'd find that we have also abandoned that uh, Christianity practice in our schools. And uh, that in itself, uh, I, I, in my personal opinion, I believe has had a serious negative impact and uh, the, the, the current status uh, in our country. And uh, this is not only a problem of South Africa, it's, it's, it's an international issue. And uh, that which needs to be addressed by us as parents, as a parent, you, you begin with your own family, you know, uh, to inculcate this culture of respecting and, uh, uh, your, your own neighbor and, 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 and having the desire to, to, to assist those who are in need of assistance. Mm, mm. Yes. Look, Tapel, I think uh, there's a lot of debate that has to go on here. We, we spent a lot of time talking about institutional matters, you know, the Constitution, but it's parliament mm-hmm. working and so on. But, the, yeah. the, the, you know, in, in 1994, when you were talking about the RDP, that contains all these things that we need to do to reconstruct our mm-hmm. country. Yes. There was also a lot of discussion about the reconstruction of the soul. You know? Indeed. Indeed. Because if we don't Indeed. reconstruct that, everything else will not be useful. So keep listening, Tabelo. We'll be having this conversation further with our guests uh, who, has, who we are lining up shortly. Aikin Soweto, good evening. Hi, J- Hi. Good evening, JJ. How are you? I'm all right, Let yeah, me thanks. tell you this. Uh, it's saddened me to hear someone say it's our Christianity mm. without realizing that Christianity is a cut and paste of African mythology stolen from African people. I mean, the story of Jesus is nothing different. It's a fictitious character based on Heru sure, or, sure, sure, sure. or, 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 or Horus. Really, my brother, I've researched this. As, as, oh, as, yes, this requires as as an, an entire show on yes. its own. But yeah, I'm sure yeah, all the reverends are going to disagree with you no, on that one. No. <laughs> They can disagree because of ignorance, but I'm telling no, you, no, all no, major no. religions of the world were stolen from us, from with Bidu, Biduism, Hinduism, Islamic, Judaism, all of them. So they were stolen mm. from Africa. So nothing original. From I can tell you from Genesis to Revelation, there's no original story cut and paste. But anyway, when you speak about morality, yes. yesterday I heard that the judge said, poor animals move on. Mm. Of which I feel her plight, but this is what I want to say. I feel important is plight, but the ANC and the SACP should move on. I agree that the SACP should move on because millions of people uh, have suffered rape, crime, and then their perpetrators, they are let free after parole. How many people mm. have been killed? You know, they're let free, you know, because they did not kill my so, relatives with the Christian. Yeah. So why must others move on and others not move on? So I in mean, your view... Are, if I may, if I may just get get it in your view, the pa- parole must be scrapped from our law altogether. Yes, life sentence should be life sentence. You must it stay there and, and 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 rot in jail it if you have killed somebody. When somebody kills JJ or killed Ike, that person is let go after twelve years of serving, uh, of supposing to serve twenty five years. So every person must serve his entire sentence. And lastly, before I leave, yes. I want to say this: uh, black people should stop uh, supporting artists like Bo Adele and all that, singing mm. their nothing music. Because mm. you look at Adele music, it's nothing. They're trying to promote it and kill the legacies of our own, like Michael Jackson, uh, breaking, trying to break her records and all that. And while they sabotage our own black artists. So for me, I said black people should support uh, African music. 
conditions. That is my conclusion. But in as far as uh, Christianity is concerned, there is no grave. We can find the pharaoh Eknetin, the pharaoh of the old and old and black pharaohs who are 10,000 years older. Show me one grave of the Philistine, of David, of Jacob, of anyone. You will never. Of Moses. It's based on fiction, my brother. Thank you very much, my brother, for your contribution. Uh, keep well. Uh, we are now going straight into our frank dialogue to tonight. We are talking about the moral state of our nation. Uh, we have on our on, on on the line the Archbishop of Cape Town, uh, Father Reverend Doctor Tawo Makuba. Uh, good evening, Father. And good evening to the other panelists. Good evening, Father. Again, then we have Reverend Kenneth Mishwe from the African Christian Democratic Party. Good, good evening, Reverend Mishwe. Good evening, sir, and all your listeners. Thank you very much for joining us. And we've got uh, Father Michael Lepsley from Cape Town. Good evening, Father. Uh, yes, good evening, JJ, and to the panelists and to the listeners. Thank you so much for joining us. And we've got Dr. Agrippa Kathide. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Kathide. Yeah, good evening, JJ. Good evening to the other panelists and, uh, and uh, your listeners. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for joining us here on Power Perspective. We thought today we'll focus on this whole issue of moral uh, regeneration, but particularly the moral state of our nation. And we're asking the question, uh, what is causing this moral state of our nation? And, and, and what, how do you understand it? How do you characterize it? But secondly, then look at the role of the church. You know, what is the role of the church in dealing with that kind of moral state of our nation? And has the church abandoned its prophetic role? Uh, has it abandoned its prophetic role, particularly after 1994, where it has seized to be to be uh, uh, critical maybe or uh, or at least critical enough of the administration and 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 so have a situation where the the, the moral state of the nation is is really in, in in collapse so those are some of the themes that we'll explore tonight and we'll take a few calls as well uh, to 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 engage with the public let's start with you uh, uh, archbishop makoba well, how do you characterize the, the current moral state of our nation right now uh, JJ, I think the country is in a moral quandary, and by that I mean um, after 20 years, uh, we should have used the resources that God has endowed this beautiful country with appropriately to serve the poorest of the poor, and I don't think uh, we have uh, uh, done that uh, adequately. And the moral dilemma is, do we develop uh, South Africa uh, in order to uh, serve those that are politically connected and those that have resources uh, and for them to gain more resources or do we ensure that the resources that God has endowed us with are shared by the majority of South Africans. And it's not a question of pointing fingers at, at political leadership or business leadership, but it's pointing a finger at all South Africans to say, you know, the pain of the immoral past and how do we right uh, that wrong yes. uh, in a democratic South Africa? But Father, are you, are you uh, therefore summing up the moral state only, only based on uh, really corruption and the misuse of resources and so on? What about all the other ills that have got nothing to do with how resources are being used. I mean, we're having grandmothers being raped, children being shot, you know, ch teachers impregnating school kids. All of that uh, has got nothing to do really with, with the corruption of the state and so on, something that has become a common cause. Uh, wh 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 would you say that also characterizes where we are as a nation? I, I, I think, uh, JJ, those are the ills of a, of a corrupt uh, uh, context. Those are the ills of a community that does not define who it is. What are the values that, as a nation, we 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 want to be characterized by? The values mm. that we are prepared to die for, the values mm. that we are prepared to be known for, uh, and um, um, the rape of, uh, sadly, of uh, grandmothers, of girl children, of boys, um, are the consequences of something that has gone all wrong. But I need to quickly, maybe you will ask this later, but I need yeah. to quickly say I don't want to dwell on, on those wrongs because there are mm. wonderful, well-meaning South Africans that we have not tapped that I want to turn the tide around. Yes. But 
my opening statement is yes. there are socio-economic, there are religious problems, there are yeah. um, people in South Africa failing to love our neighbor as we are called to love. Absolutely. We'll come neighbor. to the solutions just now, Father. I just want oh. us to diagnose a little bit what is okay. wrong in terms of the moral situation. Father Mike, how do how do you characterize what is wrong with our moral uh, stature right now, the state of our mm. morality? I think we, uh, JJ, thank you for asking the question. I think in many ways we are uh, a damaged nation. We, we are damaged in our humanity. Um, and that does go back to our past. Um, but, of course, it is always easier to blame rather than to take responsibility. And already in the conversation with the Archbishop, I think there's this interconnection between public morality and private morality. And sometimes in the faith community, we concentrate on the private morality and fail to see that public morality, so uh, an unjust economic system, is, is also mm-hmm. immoral. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the accumulation of wealth in the hands of the few at the expense of the many is also um, immoral. So I, I I think there's this this inter- interconnectedness, and I was glad you made reference to uh, what Nelson Mandela referred to as the RDP of the soul, um, because I think we we tend either, especially in the faith community, we look at we either look at the political, social, and economic issues, or we look at the psychological, emotional, and spiritual. And I think we need to we need to look inwards in ourselves, um, as well as looking outwards to the uh, to the external. And I, and I think, our, our, yeah. our, you know, our economic system meant that uh, at, at the point of democracy, that those who came into power, often with nothing, um, a number of whom are now among the super rich. Now, that's that's both that's a structural problem. And I think we've got to see that evil is not just cannot just be the actions of individuals, but structures can be evil and uh, when they become anti-life and deny mm. life to the majority. Absolutely. Reverend Mishwe, a politician seems to be often at the center of examples of what we, sh- we shouldn't be or what we shouldn't become. There's an issue about you know, whether the politicians are truthful enough, they are, they are committed enough to the poor and so on, and, and that tends to define the morality. What is your view? I think when politicians go wrong and uh, the nation goes wrong, we need to look at the church. The church has a responsibility of setting the moral agenda of the country. Mm. The church has this responsibility of bringing people, whether they are politicians or they are ordinary citizens, bringing people to the knowledge of salvation through Jesus Christ. Mm. Where salvation is not proclaimed, you are going to have people doing whatever they think is right, whatever they see on television, whatever they read in books. You know, the first time the late President Mandela raised the issue of the RDP of the soul in Parliament, Mm. my response to that was, the nation does not need the RDP of the soul, the nation needs salvation of the soul. Mm. If we Mm. look at the person of Jesus Christ, The scriptures say he came to seek and to save the lost. Mm. So the church indeed has abandoned its prophetic role. The church has to help people know what the will and plan of God is by correcting where correction is necessary. When people do wrong, when people sin, even within the church, and there are cover-ups and nothing is being said, People outside the world, people who are not in church will say, if church people can do this, it means it is correct. So in a number of ways, I believe as church leaders, we have failed in our responsibility to give guidance to the nation by telling the nation what is right and what is wrong. We know that there are people that are saying uh, wrong is relative. We cannot say what is, I'm wrong in what I'm doing, but God has given us his weight that we should use as a guide and say to people, we are people created in the image of God. And when God created us, he did not throw us on earth and say, just do whatever you think is right. But he gave us guidelines. He gave us his weight. And I believe it is church leaders, it is pastors, it is reverends and mm. bishops 
who should be talking to people and saying, according to the word of the Lord, this is the way we should go. Yeah. The issue of go, sorry, Reverend, the issue of morality does it feature at all on the agenda of Parliament? Because assumedly, uh, an organization like yours that is both in the the, the the faith realm as well as in politics should be pushing that these matters are on the agenda of Parliament. Is that the case right now? Yeah, you know, talking about the agenda of parliament, the issue of moral regeneration movement has not made any progress. And one of the meetings I attended where there was a major problem, where it was yeah, a, a question that could not be resolved, was the question of what is morality. Mm. You know, if you cannot define your problem, the chances of you solving that problem are minimal. So parliamentarians and the religious leaders who attended the moral generation movement where the question of how to define morality, many of them were disappointed because there could not be an agreement. Because when we said, we asked questions about mm. what is morality, there were some among us who said, we do not want to define morality uh, about, define morality in line or in the context of human behavior, separate okay. human behavior from yes. morality. And some of us ask the question, how do you do that? Because if you talk about... Indeed, how, how do you do that? Yeah. We'll come back to that uh, theme a, a, a little later. We are, we are on power perspective. We are talking to the Reverend Tawama Koba, uh, the Archbishop of Cape Town. We are also with Father Michael Lepsley, who is the Vice President of the South African Council of Churches. We have, we've just spoken now to Reverend Mishwe, and we are also with Dr. Agrippa Katide, who is the, uh, from the Apostolic Faith Mission. You are on Power Perspective 98.7. You can tweet us if you want to participate at Power FM 987 at JJ Tabani to say what is the moral state of our nation. Dr. Agrippa. Yes, sir. What, how do you sum up what the problem really is? I want us to go to solutions after we have, we have spoken. But we, in, in summary, what is your diagnosis basically of what the moral state of our nation is right now? I think the other panelists have. Uh hit the nail, you know, um, correctly, to say that actually, you know, the whole uh, nation is, um, is undergoing um, uh, corruption at the moment. Mm. And then um, we, we say that uh, um, you know, that's the where the problem is, um, I, I would like to say, um, because we are saying that the church should be finding people, the church should be showing the way and all that. But my understanding of Scripture is that um, the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name mm. shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, um, God says he will hear. In other words, as church, mm. we should stop pointing fingers at um, um, at the community, at the at society. At, at the, at the we should state. be saying, mm. yes, we should be saying together with society, we should be repenting before God. We should be saying to the Lord, we are sorry. If mm. you study, for instance, uh, the book of Daniel, mm. uh, you will understand that Daniel was not only praying for himself. He was praying even for his nation. He mm. was saying, we together with our forefathers have sinned against you. I think that should be our attitude as church. So that um, Are you saying that that you, is not our attitude right now as a church in South Africa? Have we not repented, therefore? Mm, you look here, um, we, we, we have, we have not. People should be seeing us as people who repent mm. before God, not people who, who, who point fingers. But you think the and church I is part of the problem, therefore, in this moral decay? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? And um, in, in fact, you hear a lot of people saying, if uh, so-and-so is doing this, why can't I do it? Mm. If uh, so-and-so being a pastor or being a 
being a leader or church leader is doing this, why can't I do it as well? I can do it better, actually. Absolutely. <laughs> let's, let's hear yeah. so what, what some of the callers will say. We'll pick this up later. Uh, Sizwe in Davidton. Good evening. Hi, JJ. Hello, hello, Sizwe. Yes, and to your panel, as well. Hmm. Uh, indeed, I think the church has abandoned its prophetic growth. Mm. Actually, the church has just become the passport of the government here. What do you, what do you mean? The church should be spearheading the process like your uh, stewardship programs of the resources that these countries have. But because of the element of materialism, uh, conniving with government officials, church members in giving positions and so on, they can't stay in their prophetic role to say, that says the road, regardless of who does wrong, be it in government or in other institutions in this country. Yeah. And we are, we are somehow bought into the politics to think that this is the same church that used to host all the revolution movement in Hotso House and call them, that says the Lord, regardless who, who did wrong then. Mm. I'm not sure what went wrong, but you can't say do that. Do you think it has to do with the fact that we are now a secular society and the weight probably of what the church would say is seen as just like any other stakeholder and not an overriding prophetic role that the government yes. would really take note? Yes, of course, because uh, a lot of other... A political organization, they're no longer taking the church now as a neutral body, but more as a body that lines up with the ANC and they can't call certain people to order when they do wrong. I mean, the Zuma case is a case in point, and I mean, many other... But they have uh, called cases. They have called uh, uh, the, the president to order. Father, Father Michael, you had a meeting with the president last year following the Van Royen finance minister... Uh, flip flop and 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 according to the statement issued after that meeting you you agreed to disagree with the president i think that is true I, I, in fact the south african council of churches had been wanting to um meet with the president for quite a long time and it was only in the in the face of the van royen debacle that uh the president agreed to to meet with us and 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 uh i think you see when it comes to relationship between the church and the state there will always be issues that the church will agree with the state and not just the churches yes. all the faith faith communities mm. but there'll be other issues in which we say no you're acting contrary uh to basic morality and i wanted to make the point that that morality is not just an issue for christians it's an issue for all people of faith and also people who are not religious at all the issue of conscience i don't know why parliament couldn't work out what morality is i mean it, we, we we teach our children a sense of what is right and what is wrong absolutely but i think it's true that um post 94 um we had learned how to live with an illegitimate state now our state is not illegitimate it's legitimate but it doesn't mean that everything it does uh is contrary it's, it's and i think yes. sometimes we think morality is a matter of signing up to charters, for example, where I think what we need much more are examples of morality, um, be it uh, those in, in, in political life or those in the faith communities, because I think that's what challenges people when they see people living moral lives. And we can only say, as he would suggest, we rightly should, thus says the Lord, yeah. if we ourselves and our lives are beyond reproach. So, so in, 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 the, in line with that, in line of, in, of speaking out, what, what was the church's message in, in the face of what everybody was condemning as, a, as, a, as you call it, the debacle on, over this whole economic you know, uh, uh, disaster that happened last year in December? Well, I think we were saying that, um, and of course, Archbishop Tabo was part of that delegation. He could also make his own own comments. Um, we were pointing out that there was um, a, a, a dramatic loss in confidence uh, in the president. And also, um, we saw the country going down the drain. And because as a faith community, economically, as a faith community, we are always concerned most with the poorest. And our view was that as the economy was in danger, of collapsing, it would be the poorest, the most vulnerable, and the most marginalized who would suffer the most. Uh, Tato in Pretoria, good evening. Good evening to your guest. Evening, Tato. Uh, what is your perspective? Yes, 
My perspective uh, is that, firstly, South Africa has been an immoral country from 1552 until today. From the perspective or from the point of view of black people, because black people have suffered injustices from 1652 until today. That is immoral. But they've suffered that injustice for 500 years, and there has not been any qualitative changes in their conditions of existence for 500 years. Mm. So that, to me, only tells us that the world does not operate on morality. If the world really operated on morality, on what is right and what is wrong, on love, then a lot of injustices in the world wouldn't have happened. The violence that the poor people, uh, the people, black people in particular of this country have experienced for 500 years wouldn't have happened. But the reality of the matter is that you cannot, the world does not operate like that. The world operates uh, on power. Mm, mm. White people inflicted injustices which were immoral on black people in this country because they had the power to do so. You see, And I also think that we, we tend to think uh, about morality as something that is monolithic. Uh, morality is not monolithic uh, uh, per se, and it's not neutral. Uh, just, I mean, uh, just, just stay I on remember... the, Tato, just stay on okay. the line there. Reverend Misha, do you, do you agree that uh, unfortunately we, we, don't, we are not operating in a moral framework and that's why you are able to say to us, look, this thing is not on the agenda of parliament in any, in any significant way? Yeah, no, I, I agree that, um, that the issue of morality um, is not receiving sufficient attention um, because um, if, if it was, there would be guidance. And I still want to come back to the fact that church leaders must help. Um, during the struggle, church leaders were helping. Church yes. leaders were saying apartheid is sin, apartheid is wrong. But three after 1994, church leaders are not saying what is sin. It's like the only sin that was there was apartheid. Mm. So if we were saying mm. this is wrong and we say let's fight it, let's repent from it, let's stop it, why are we not saying the same thing today, that this is wrong, Absolutely. Let's, let's condemn this, let's correct this, so that our children and children's children can have a better future in our country. Say there, no are number of things, okay, let's... there are a number of things. Sorry there, Reverend. I'll come okay, back to you. Can I just conclude, uh, JJ? Yes, yes, Reverend. No, it, Go ahead. Tato, can I just conclude? Go ahead. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say this point that... Uh, Morality is not uh, monolithic, it is yes. not neutral as well, because the morality, for instance, if I'm to give an example, the morality of, of a racist is not the same as the morality of an anti-racist, the morality of a rich person is not the same as the morality of a poor person, the morality of a powerful person is diametrically opposed to the morality of a powerless person. So, for instance, to teach me as a member of a black race to pray, to God to come and save us as a, the, uh, as, black, as a member of the black nation to, to, to alleviate our condition mm -hmm. when our people are living like sardines in Alexandra and in Tembisa. To me, on its own, it's an injustice. Okay, Reverend. Oh, Honor Honorable crazy. member, I have to interrupt you now. We'll just have to take the news and then I will pick it up after the news with Risho Ketsumala. Chi. Power Perspective with JJ Tabani, Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. to midnight. On Power 98.7. Now, we're talking. Yeah, on Power Perspective 98.7 with me on Kopoze JJ Tavani, your new host here on Power Perspective. And today we're having a frank dialogue about the role of the church in society, the moral state of our nation. We're going to go now into, into solutions. And we've got uh, on our panel tonight uh, the Reverend... Uh, uh, Kenneth Mishwe, we've got Archbishop Taoma Koba, the Archbishop of Cape Town, we've got Dr. Agrippa Kathide, and Father Michael Lepsley, uh, who is the Vice President of South African Council of Churches. Uh, Father Makoba, now let's go into solutions now to say we've diagnosed now what the problems are. We, the, the, there seems to be general agreement that the church has not done enough in its terms of its prophetic role. What needs to be done? Uh, thank you, uh, JJ. Uh, I think what needs to be done, first and foremost, is to uh, compliment you for this program because I think South Africans 
are talking at each other instead of take, talking with each other. And um, uh, uh, maybe you should invite each one of us uh, for this length of time to really unpack some of the things that we, uh, we were saying. Mm. And I want to say, uh, 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 just as a biblical scholar, uh, the role of a prophet is to explain the plan and purposes of God mm. and, and what God has in store for us uh, in the future. And the second role is to uh, try and recalibrate God's people so that they align to God's plan of salvation. And I, I think uh, democracy is messy, and we, unlike uh, being heroic, uh, like we did in the past, as uh, Reverend Misho intimated, where we stood up and uh, criticized apartheid, uh, prophecy needs to be very smart and, and to be very educated uh, and to be guided by the fact that we are still saying the plan and purpose of God, as outlined in John 10:10, 10, 10, is for all God's people to have life and have it abundantly, mm-hmm. not those in Parliament, as uh, some are benefiting from the resources by being Parliament, or those that are politically connected. Mm-hmm. But all God's people must have this abundant life. For that's what uh, He came yes. uh, for, for all of us uh, to have. And prophets must also uh, speak. They don't have to necessarily criticize and uh, uh, stand on the rooftops, but they need to pray, they need to reflect, they need to judge, they need to see, and then they need to call differentiated members of the society to act according to what God has given to them. And that is Paul's theology of the body. It doesn't have to be the church that says, Thou shall, but we have the church gathered and the church scattered. The church gathered it consists of the leaders and the church on Sunday, but the church scattered is like Reverend Mission Parliament, like Christians in uh, in business, Christians uh, in economy, Christians mm. in academia, Christians in health, doing the right thing. Absolutely. Do you, the church gathered? Does it? Does the church gathered feel constrained in your view in in in, in fulfilling? Uh, this prophetic mission that you've just described? I think the church gathered is still fulfilling its mission of really pointing people to what God is up to in their lives. And what we need to do is people shouldn't just be bound by what God is up to in their lives, but they should actually go and live it out Mm. in the differentiated roles that God has called them as politicians, as business people, as teachers, as uh, unionists, as whatever. I mean, as Father Michael Lepsley uh, is one beautiful example. I mean, he goes out there and he helps people to reflect on the pain inflicted by all sorts of things. Mm. But that for me is the power of the resurrection when he says, even the current situation will never overwhelm you because God has created you for love and out of love, and you, okay. you will overcome. And okay. that's what the church needs to do. Okay, Father. Let's hear Michael in Foster Rose. M- Michael, good evening. Good, yes, good, good evening, evening uh, JJ. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Go ahead, Michael. Look, JJ, uh, I think that uh, the, the distorted view of a prophet that we just heard right now is rather uh, uh, sickening because... God does not send his prophets in time of peace. Mm. When there's strife in a land, God sends his prophets. Now, mm. these should carry the prophetic message, the, the prophetic message of God. And it cannot be preached outside the power of the resurrected Christ, who is the Lord our God. There's no other God but Jesus. The world will not accept it, but that's the truth. And there is no man of God in this world that can agree with this world. Right now, all those theologians that you have right now, they could not say, utter, or do anything against, the, against their brother, uh, Desmond Tutu, who let his daughter marry another woman. And they don't want to touch homosexuality. That is an abomination and brings a curse upon the people. Now, they will not say these things because they mm. just don't want to preach the word of God. It's good for them, for them to be recognized by politicians, to eat bread with the 
politician on the, on, the, on the political table, but when they have to do the, word, the, the will of God and preach the word of God, they will not do it because they care much about their stomachs than what the, God says. That's thank, the truth. Thank, thank you very much, Michael, for that perspective. Sifudi in Ranfontein. Your guest and again, JJ. Mm. Uh, JJ, you know the issue of material well-being yes. cannot be overemphasized more. Uh, JJ, you know I'd like to point a critical finger at churches. After mm. 94, they demobilized mm. and they used to be proactive. Right now they are reactionary. They used to be, you know, the, the bearers of morality. Mm. What, should, what should they do in the current context? I think there's an agreement no, that... Pro- yep. You know, if there's a problem, yes. they shouldn't meet these uh, 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 perpetrators of, 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 of maintaining previous privileges. They shouldn't meet them behind closed doors. We should listen to... We should hear them, and they should inspire us, JJ. Yes. After 94, they got intimidated, they demobilized, they were afraid of the personality of that time. Mm, mm. Yes, JJ. Thank you, Sifudi. Thank you for your contribution. Tenolo in Midval. Hello, Tenolo. But look, sir, mm. um, I would like to say I like the book Animal Farm. Mm. Um, mm. You know, there's three or four types of religion that I would like to highlight. There is Islam. And I think it's the next world world order. There is also um, the, 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 the Jew. Yes. And all these people, they've got a culture, religion, way of life, morale, all packed in one lifestyle. These two people that I would like to uh, uh, point out. And there's a religion that we call Christianity, which is shattered and it comes out as different forms. I mm. did say in the first time when I was calling mm. in, you have different types. Yes. And even our president has been ordained. I wonder if Dr. Kenneth Mishra would concur. And I wonder why even our parliament opens up in uh, people dressing up and, and there's no, there's no, that thing, Yabo, that French Chicani, where there's a prayer and where there's um, our own culture. No, there is a prayer. They say it's, it's silent prayer and meditation. They do give a, a, a provision for that at the beginning of the Look, parliament. When, when it was, uh, after that the Mandela came in, it was, it was, not it, silent. was the activity that we would, would want to see, would want to see our traditional healers going up there, born, born that day, George Baloy, the late, going up their stage, burning in Bepo, yeah. and, and all religions represented. We, that's what we call um, a culture and religion installation and, and, and keep, keeping people up moral in spirit. But it doesn't happen nowadays. Now what we see, we see moral decay, and we blame uh, 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 culture and everything, but we don't see horror. this thing. Look, if you go to the Islam, which I call the next world order, mm. um, you, you, you go from the top and to the bottom. Those people have got a lifestyle, have got a way of, uh, of life. Go to, 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 to Batuarabarangi Majuta. They've got a lifestyle, and it's incarnated into their religion. Now, when we come to our Christianity, it shambles. People, omongili kesoliki, omongili holy holy. Now people are eating grass now. So okay, don't you see hulu. that we need to start it from thank, the, thank, the Godim. Godim th- thank you very much. I have to take other callers now, Tenu. On 98.7 in Tswane and Johannesburg. 103.6 in Soweto and the West Rand. 104.4 in the Val. And 107.2 in Ekuruleni. Channel 889 on DSTV Audio Bouquet. And powerfm.co.za. This, this is Power 98.7. Now we're talking. Offense in Rustenburg. Good evening. Good evening, JJ. How are you? All right. How are you, Offense? Um, good what is your perspective? Um, my perspective is that, you know, the traditional 
uh, charity role that was played by churches back then is something that we don't see uh, nowadays. But yet, people are still expected to tithe and so on. I mean, nowadays we see churches, uh, pastors claim they are, they are not allowed to be touching the ground. They stand on top of congregates. They see congregate snakes and tetra and grass, all of those things. So there was a call who called and was uh, speaking about how Christianity as a religion is very much splintered. And I would like to align myself uh, with those comments. And also to say that, you know, when we talk about material things and we talk of religion, we cannot mix uh, material things and issues of spirituality. We cannot want to, 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 to be church goers and say we are doing it because Muruti Mang Mang uh, has a Mercedes Benz. Therefore, now I will also go to church and tie for 2000 and maybe I will get a Rolls Royce. Once we start doing that, we are mixing the two. There's spirituality and there's material things, and we should never uh, be mixing the two. Okay, offense. Uh, what, what, do, is your view that uh, the, the, the church has lost direction in terms of the role it should be playing, in your experience? In, in, so this is, that's that's what, I, what, what I feel and that's what I see uh, happening. Uh, what what must be done now, Tep? I mean, uh, uh, do do you go to church yourself? Do do you belong to any particular church? I don't go to a particular church. Mm. Um, what I do, whenever I feel like going to church, I will go to the church that I feel like going to on that particular uh, Sunday. But I do not belong to a certain church. Would you encourage that people should then uh, uh, strengthen churches so that they are able to then play this charity work that you are talking about? Um, I would say, you know, if, if, if you're going to expect uh, communities to be making contributions, especially financially so, towards churches, that contribution should, get, should, uh, should then go towards uplifting our community. So that's what was happening uh, back then. People would go to churches, and that's where some people would get some form of an education. Some communities were able to have, like, communal gardens and stuff like that. And whatever it was, uh, whatever benefit was reaped from the church was for the benefit of the majority and not just for the congregants or just for the pastor. Thank you very much, Fenzo, for your contribution. Funky in Pretoria. Yes, JJ. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening to you, Funky. Yes. You know, you know the, the, the ANC, let me talk about the ANC. It, it, it was formed by, by priests. I think you're aware of that. Absolutely, uh, yes. and and yeah, and the and the chiefs and the kings. Now, now that is the 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 values that they they crafted and brought about in the in the entire Congress movement, leading up to the democratic dispensations are still there. Now, all all the political parties, I mean, uh, particularly in the country as ours, uh, we the moral fiber is not, yes. not necessarily. We still have a sense of belonging. We still united as a country. The, the, the impression is created that, no, the, particularly for many people, including yourself, as sometimes I read your articles, mm. that, no, we are morally bankrupt. Uh, it, it can be, this is just a period where one individual is leading. He has come, he's going to go. You are still going to have many people. And I believe at some stage, priests are going to come together and, and lead not lead for the purposes of of of, of being in positions, but yes. lead for the purposes of of their broader societal role. In, I mean, I mean, in in, in giving guidance, yes. in uniting. But do you ag- so do you I agree think- that our politics and our politicians uh, have lost a moral compass? Do you, do do you at least share that sentiment or not? That is that is the point I'm calling. I'm saying in in in. In fact, many, uh, many, including yourself, as I've read your writings, uh, you you do hold that view, and I I don't agree because uh, uh, I mean you can't say because for instance we have President Zuma, who has who has challenges yeah. uh, at personal level. Yeah. Uh, therefore, ourselves as ANC members on the ground mm. uh, uh, can't think and reason. No, he he just like many other leaders. Uh, has come and 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 he will and he's going to go. Now yeah. we are still there. 
Yeah, not all of us. Yeah. So, so it's not it's not all lost. So you don't have any yeah, difficulty, also, uh, moral difficulty with whatever the president is doing at the moment. No, I'm saying it's not. For me, it's challenges. For me, it's challenges. Uh, uh, at, I mean, you can't honestly speaking, you can't compare him to President Mandela, to Chief Albert Lee, to Lee, to to Oliver. They led at different times. Well, we are now at the at the at, we are now in a political discourse, discourse or period where even your twelve year old can challenge you on issues, mm. of, including mm. issues of morality. So now, if you are not at that level, you don't. Uh, let's right, let's, let's leave it there for now, but I, I, we will have a, a further discussion, of course, on this to look at, for example, whether or not, you know, leaders, current leaders should emulate previous leaders and so on. But that's not for today. But thank you, Funky, for that contribution. Mm-hmm. Ole Bocheng in Rosebank. Good evening. Hi, JJ. How are you doing? Fine. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, I believe your conversation started as what is causing this moral decay and how do we navigate it? And I think that the problem is that um, we are focusing our morality on an institution, which is the church. Morality has nothing to do with the church. It has everything to do with spirituality. Mm. And spirituality will always inform your moral compass. And if your moral compass and your spirituality are anchored in an institution that is subject to the whims of man, it will never be true, and it will always be fluid. And I think that there are issues of morality that the church is just too young to understand. And if we want to anchor our morality, we need to divorce it from the church and anchor it in spirituality. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ole Bocheng, there in Rosebank. Uh, Pule in Rustenbeck. Hello. Hey, JJ. Good evening. Evening to you. Quick one. Kaswanarare tumelo etata exotabadile edintan. Sure. Ah, ah, ah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, <laughs> we talk of colonialism. Yes. But we have never looked into colonialism when it comes to Catholic, when it comes to Wesley, when it comes to all these other denominations. Mm. One of them mentioned something uh, the Jewish community, the Islam. But we are one foot into. Uh, our traditional way of doing things. We are one foot into uh, the colonized way of doing things. Ome Baba Sweu, Kodi Kerekin Zeri Sweu, Haba Paretse Aparondati. We are only playing for one God, but we have got different denominations. Mm. Why? 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 We are still colonized in terms of our beliefs as the acclaimed Christians. Hmm. Yeah, just, just, yeah, just, 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 just hold on there. Just stay on the line. Dr. Agrippa, do you agree that there is an, an, an extent to which this, the, the, the spirituality is divorced from what the church should be doing? At the same time, there is also a separation between what the religion is supposed to be doing and what culture is supposed to be doing. And that's part of the trouble now about not getting a proper role for the church in this current conundrum. Yeah, you see, um, 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 the, the spirituality uh, that we're talking about is uh, something very, very important. Mm. And actually, our our spirituality as uh, as as people of the church, as far as I'm concerned, should be informed by scripture. Yes. Okay. And then um, scripture should be telling us um, what kind of spirituality we should be following right now. Um, the, you know what? Um, as I'm listening to the callers. Mm. Um, I'm sensing that um, when 1994 came, we actually, there was a euphoria. We thought that the kingdom of God had come. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? We thought that the kingdom of God had come. That's why, you know, we, 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 we lost even our, our voices, prophetic voices, um and then um we thought we had come yeah you you understand we thought we had arrived 
And then we we only discovering right now that look, we have not arrived. How do we you take know, back that prophetic voice, uh, Doctor Agrippa? Because I really want us to get into the grips of some practical things that we should be doing. Uh, we mentioned earlier on, for example, the meeting between the church leaders and the president. We talk about the economy, and uh, yeah. you know, like like a lot of people would, would, would agree that when we don't link faith with action, then it becomes meaningless. What are the practical things we can do to take back that prophetic role, in your view? Yeah, you see, um, taking that uh, uh, the prophetic voice in, into action is, is is quite important. But you know what 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 happened is that uh, some of our champions uh, or in the prophetic uh, ministry uh, were absorbed, were what shall I say? They they, they joined government. And then um, um, it, 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 what, what happened to us is that uh, uh, we were left, you know, as if uh, we didn't have uh, any voice as church. But we do have a voice. Mm. We do mm. have a voice. The, un- the only thing that when uh, apartheid was removed, um, we, we, we thought that uh, the kingdom of God had, had come. Whereas the kingdom of God had, had had not come, or shall I say, it had partially come. Uh, no, 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 no. Archbishop, no, please, no. please come in there. No, 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 JJ. I think uh, that's why you need to call is, uh, some of us uh, individually to mm. respond. But the Bible is very clear that the kingdom of God uh, is at hand. The kingdom of God is uh, in our midst. The kingdom of God. Uh, uh, you know, the tension between the kingdom of God that is at hand and the kingdom of God that will come uh, needs to be taken seriously. But mm. I think in terms of the practicality that we're looking at, uh, JJ, yes, uh, but... the prophetic voice, is that voice that consistently says God will never abandon South Africa or the world in spite of our wrongdoing. God will work through various people in order to educate his children that are getting short the education. God will ensure and tap the goodwill of South Africans to ensure that the economy does not benefit those that are uh, connected. God will ensure that South Africans are healed from TB, from AIDS and HIV, and South Africans are fed. Not just little examples of uh, people that are hydrating those who are suffering drought. For me, that is a powerful prophetic role that does not need individuals to stand on the rooftop, but that is exercised by all God's children. Sorry but, to bat yes. in, JJ. No, no, that's fine. Father Mike, what is practically, as we round off, what are the practical things, in your view, that the church should be concerned about to, to, to really deal with this issue of the moral conundrum? I want to come in with another angle. First, I want to say that the question, the, to put some of the things what Archbishop Tabo has been saying in different language, to say, what is God's dream for South Africa? Mm. And then, what is our part in cooperating with God's dream? What mm. are the obstacles we face that mm. prevent us from being full participants? And I want to suggest that we are still a damaged nation. We're damaged mm. in our humanity. We're damaged by what we've done, what's been done to us, and what we failed to so do. So there's unfunished so, so, business of healing that is so, still yes, a big Yes, well, the issue. point I want to make is that mm. the, psych, the, 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 the political and economic transformation is fundamental. Equally fundamental is the psychological, emotional, and spiritual uh, journey of healing. And if we don't deal with our pain and give ourselves permission to do with our pain and find ways of detoxifying of the poison we still carry from the past, we won't be able to be full participants in participating in God's dream for South Africa. On the other side of this, we will ask our panelists to round off their arguments. The station for news and talk, Power 98.7, on 103.6 in the south of Johannesburg, 104.4 in the Val, and 107.2 in Ekuruleni. Now, we're talking... It's been a, a, an exciting discussion, but uh, as, as uh, Father Tabote said, said, we will need more extensive discussions. We're just uh, teasing it out, but putting it out there for, for conversations uh, with, with uh, a, a variety of our listeners. On, on, on Twitter, 
Tebo Homolo, he says that there is nothing to expect, that there is not, that is not forced on anyone. It's, it, if, if one person lives their life the way that they see fit, uh, we have um lesego uh, is saying that africans don't think in terms of nationhood and afrocentricity then if they don't think that so people won't ever be be liberated um and 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 Moekets again says the religion goes hand in hand with economic order and global political agenda africans must return to their cultures uh, uh, less, uh, so, so there's a lot of uh, a, a discussion that that seeks to to say that the, the, the issue is, is is much more complex than simply what the church itself can do uh, as, as as an organization. So I'll ask a panelist to let's start with you, Reverend Mishwe. If, if there's one thing that we can take away from this conversation in terms of unfinished business that we must still do as a society, but also as a church, what would that be? Well, JJ, um, I hope you you'll be patient with me. I won't be long. I'll just mention three quick things that I believe have to be done. Mm. Now, many people have agreed, including the panelists, that the church has lost its moral um, pro or pro prophetic voice. So I would suggest, firstly, that we must do an introspection as the church, particularly the church leadership. How and why and where did we lose, we lose this prophetic voice? And how can we recover it? Because it is needed to help South Africa back on the right track. That's yes. the first thing. Mm. And the second thing, I want to borrow the words of the Archbishop Mokoba when he was explaining what the prophet is. He said, among other things, the prophet explains God's plan of salvation and aligns to God's plan and purpose for our lives. I fully agree with that. We need to find and as leaders explain God's plan of salvation to our people. And thirdly, I believe as the church, we need to become an expression of the love and mercy of a caring God. Mm. We should be helping and caring for the poor. You know, in this drought, it was so sad to see people of other religions going all over, taking water, helping the people, the, uh, providing boreholes. And the church, it was silent on the part of the church. And I think we need to become his expression, God's expression of love. He mm. loves poor people. As the church, we need to be seen to be doing something, not just talking, but doing something Absolutely. to show the love of God to our people. Thank you very much, Reverend Mishwe. Dr. Grippe, your final words? I, I, I just want to say, um, you know, it, it may seem like it's an old cliche uh, to say the struggle continues. Um, we, I think we should be uh, continuing uh, the struggle against corruption, against uh, uh, rape, against immorality, sexual immorality, and all that. Yes. Uh, to, to to say that as church, we are still here, we're still around, but uh, we, we 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 have we are not saying that we have arrived. We are continuing with the struggle. Thank you very much, Dr. Gripe. Father Mike, final words? Yeah, not, not, I want to say that not all people are religious, but all people have a spirituality and mm. ask questions. I think also um, the faith community, actually organized faith community across South Africa, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, traditional, and other people of goodwill are exercising ministries of compassion that don't always fill headlines in the newspaper. What does need to happen is our prophetic voice needs to come out loudly and clearly, but with great humility because of our own shortcomings too. But also the last thing to say is that as an institute for healing of memories, we believe that all people have a story to tell and every story needs a listener. So we need to listen to each other's pain yes. much more. Thank you very much, Father. Archbishop, you've got the last word. Uh, I want to say, as South Africans, we need to pluck up the moral courage to say, thus says the Lord, without fear or favor. Mm. There are many uh, South Africans of goodwill that want to make this country work, and let's uh, get those talking and uh, make this country um, what God has destined it uh, to be. 
Thank you very much, Father. And thank you to all our panelists, Father Michael Lepsi, Dr. Agrippa, Dr. Uh, Reverend Mishwe. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Power Perspective. Let the ANC know that they have, they have a large majority. Mubarak had a large majority. Gaddafi had a large majority. Watch out. I am warning you. Watch out. Watch out. Please watch out. We were helped by the international community to overcome apartheid. We. Power 98.7. Power. Now we're talking.